of Ripley presents Dystopia. And now we shall improvise for you book one of a dystopian tale. Book one. <laughs> A dystopian epic. But what we need from you to get started is something quite simple, really. <laughs> An object. A simple, everyday object, such as a pen. Or perhaps a book. A hairbrush. A hairbrush. A, brush. a bookmark. A cute. A bouquet. A pocket watch. A, a cat. Hey! <laughs> I heard a bouquet, <laughs> and I shall take it. But this is just one of the two elements I need from you to begin this story. The second is a... Let's, let's call her a tribute, shall we? We all know she's a victim. Excuse me, miss, would you please do the honors? for all must hear the tribute. Sarah! Sarah! mother died, someone delivered a bouquet of twelve roses to my home. The card said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> for one day, I really felt like someone was out there watching out for me. Someone was looking down, thinking that maybe I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up. <laughs> the roses are very expensive. You only get them if you're really, really rich. For one day, I really thought some royalty, some high up was going to sweep me away. The next day, my mother died. <laughs> and no luck really came to me after that. Sometimes I walk through the public gardens and I stop to smell the roses and they make me sick. I never got feedback. I never got notice why she was taken away from me. It was just my little gift on the doorstep, I suppose. Assigned. But if I get to work with you, that would be excellent. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I. I don't know. What if I've done something wrong? No, you I haven't. haven't. I do have, and I've just. I've... No one's ever said that spending time with me was excellent before. That's all. <laughs> I only mean. 
seen in the fact that you are excellent in your skills, of course. <laughs> Besides the fact that you have kind eyes. Frank was one of the other orphans. <laughs> <laughs> He was about two years younger than me. I'd see him bopping around town. <laughs> He's a nice kid. I worried about him, but you can't really worry too much about other people when you're so busy taking care of yourself, you know? I'm not trying to be cruel, it's just the way it is. I'm aware that, uh, Bucket tying and carrying requires heavy upper arm strength, and while that's not something that I necessarily possess... Hey. <laughs> Are you alright? You seem agitated. I am not agitated in the slightest. I apologize for my demeanor. I am merely awakened. I have merely realized that there's more. And that I must show ambition and, 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 and be and be the man that a father may have taught me to be. <laughs> God is awakening out for you. Oh. Nothing particularly, Ripley. Please show me your handiwork. It's pretty easy, actually. The rope is pretty thick, and the strands latch together. You ever heard of Velcro? <laughs> I can't say that I have particularly. It's all right. My mom told me about it once. It's, it's this thing that they used to have that were, well, it would latch. So when you get the really good strands, they latch. See, this, this, this rope is made out of twine, see? And this twine is made out of birch wood. I find it in the public gardens. I go at night, and I... I shouldn't be telling you that. <laughs> well, that's okay. Your secret's safe with me. All right. I go to the public garden. <laughs> and I climb up the birch trees and I strip them. And I turn that into twine. And that twine... latches. <laughs> he was looking at me in the strangest way. <laughs> you know, when my mom died, I was sure that was the last time anyone was going to look at me, and that's, that's been true for the past two years, really. I'm kind of a loner, but the way Frank was staring at me, I... Did I say how old he was? <laughs> Listen, Ripley, I understand that I'm 14 and you're 16. <laughs> but there are things that men can do whether they are 12 or 2. <laughs> I would like to take your hand in marriage, if that was possible. Because I feel like we have been latched together like Velcro. Frank, this is crazy. I'm sorry. No, I, I didn't mean crazy. I didn't... No, Frank, I... Good luck. Orphan! <laughs> Buckets! <laughs> Get the pile! <laughs> Gardens. I was late, ma'am. I'm sorry. I was crying. <laughs> Ripley, remind us what we do with our emotions. We put them back under the ground. 
where things grow out of. <laughs> That's right. And what happens when we plant them there? They stay put nice and neat. <laughs> and society grows out of that. That's right. <laughs> what happens with the healthy emotions that we bury? They create roots which go deeper into the ground which no one will ever see. <laughs> What do we do with the unhealthy emotions? What happens with them? We dig them up, we cut them out, and we turn them into stew. <laughs> <laughs> Assess young Frank's emotions for me, please. Do I really have to? Yes. <laughs> Frank is showing signs of distress, visible in his eyes, his posture, and his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> he has exuded more, it has clearly surfaced. He must learn to let it wash off and sink back down into the earth. Do I really have to? <gasps> yes, get close. Yeah, do it, please. I need to pick the pulse. I can take it, I'm a man. This is something we went through almost every day. <laughs> Mistress Franklin. <laughs> She's the woman all the orphans were assigned to. At least the ones who were assigned to the garden. She was the keeper of us, you see. And I really do think that what she was trying to teach us was for our own good, because you know what? It's hard here. It's really hard. When my mom was taken away, I wasn't prepared for what that would feel like. Nobody told me that pain like that could exist. So I cracked open. If somebody had taught me from the beginning to keep it all down, maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. That's what Miss Franklin teaches us what we're supposed to learn. I can check it. Check the pulse. Check the palms and the brow for sweat and assess. You know very well there are good seeds and there are bad seeds. Do you want to grow into a rose or do you want to grow into a thistle? <laughs> Just give me your wrist and also I'll be over Frank. Come on. Make this easier for both of us, please. You could have made it easy. You could have said yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nobody's ever asked me to marry them before. It's because I'm 14 you're 16. I just... <laughs> it's fine. I thought you were different. No, I... <gasps> to be honest, I was shocked. Shh, I don't want to hear you talk anymore. It hurts my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Your wrist is really warm. Your pulse is racing. Because I hate you. I'm sorry, that was a lie. I don't hate you. You got what you needed. Assess it. Frank should be sent home to rest. Good. I agree. I Frank. can deal with this. I promise I can't. I can swallow it. I can bury it. Frank? <laughs> Except your pruning. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Ripley. Good. These trees need water. The soil is dry. Get your buckets. <laughs> you want to know what? I don't really know why I said no to him. I'm 16. It's a little young, I suppose. She's 14. <laughs> We're both still kids. But I, I like Frank. I, I just, it surprised me because I've never thought of him that way before. And I... I don't know whether I like him that way. You can't just start liking somebody, right? Right?
skirts of town. I had been to this destination before, the forestry, but I had never seen him before. <laughs> I'll just leave them right here. That's cool. <laughs> Or something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that sound was. I think it was supposed to be a sentence, but I was looking at his arms. <laughs> I had never seen one. <laughs> they were almost as thick as the tree. <laughs> And the sweat that was dripping down his forehead was blinding in the sunlight. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new um, time schedule for me, you AM, usually. What? <laughs> what? I'm usually a morning person when I deliver the buckets for the bark. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's a. There's another orphan that comes by, and it's not you. It's Frank. <laughs> Frank, yeah. It's kind of uh, skittish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I felt bad that I just called Frank skittish. I don't think Frank is skittish. I think Frank just hasn't properly learned how to tamp his feelings down, that's all. <laughs> He'll get there. A lot happens between 14 and 16. <laughs> Oh, I know the water's for the bark, but it's a really hot day. <laughs> I'm Ripley. <laughs> I'm Tad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. You all right? Oh man, I thought the tree was gonna fall the other direction. <laughs> Frank, you Frank, right? are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Did the tree fall on you? The tree fell on you. You were under the tree. I was up in the tree. Uh. I saw everything. <laughs> Missing something? What was there to see? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I gotta go. Yeah? Alright, yeah. Well, my, my tree is filled, so uh, on to the next tree. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, see you around. Or whatever, I don't know.
Franklin. Yes, ma'am. Where is Mistress Franklin? <laughs> My first name is Franklin. <laughs> I thought you were referring to me. <laughs> I will make a note of it. Come here. Dear Frank. Here, sit at my feet. Uh -uh. <laughs> what an honor. <laughs> It is a great honor for me to have you here. You know, many young orphans, for there are so many in our city. <laughs> many of them don't understand what a gift they are to our world. You've been weeding, yes? Of course, ma'am, it's, it's my 6 a.m. routine, right before I bring the buckets to Tad. Oh, Tad. <laughs> Tad is a perfect example. You see, you weed a garden because weeds choke out the more beautiful life that's there. You remove the knot grass, <laughs> the wild mustard. The dandelions with their whimsical blowing heads. <laughs> but dandelions are pretty. Yes, some weeds are pretty. But ultimately, do they perfect the garden? No. And that's why you're so important. <clears throat> Ma'am, if I'm to understand your meaning correctly, and I, I think I do, what if... What if one was to consider themselves a weed and would not like to be? For the sake of perhaps a rose noticing what one might perceive as a weed? <laughs> Once a thistle was not a weed, but then it became one. Once, a rose was a weed, and then it became perfection. All my orphans have this choice. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're asking me for advice on love, I don't have any. <laughs> I think you just gave me advice on love whether you realize it or not. <laughs> yes. This has been very instrumental for me. Yes, I would imagine so. Goodbye, Franklin. Goodbye. Good luck. And to you. <laughs> Ma'am, you don't want me to weed that one yet? <laughs> no, Dunsley, I don't. <laughs> you never know with horticulture. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say your name was? Ripley. It's a pretty 
it in. This was two compliments I had received recently. <laughs> First, Frank had told me that I was excellent to spend time with. <laughs> and then Tad told me I had a pretty name. I was feeling things that I had never felt before. <laughs> it's kind of hard to describe because when you're taught to clamp down your emotions, you don't really have a vocabulary to express them. The only thing that I can say is, once I stuck my hand in some fire, <laughs> and it stung, and it was hot, and it tickled, and it was burning. My hand was burning. <laughs> and I felt like I was burning in my chest every time I looked at Tad. And it felt dangerous. <laughs> you know, my mom, right before she disappeared, <laughs> she admitted to me that she was in love with our neighbor. I had never heard her say that before. You know, I don't know who my father is. It's not really a, a thing that we've got. <coughs> By that, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> By that, I mean we don't really have, you know, two people that raise you. It's just the one. I'm not making sense, <laughs> but it's how it works here. <laughs> and so when my mom told me that she was in love with her neighbor, it was, it, was, it was a new thing that I had never heard of before. Coincidence? You don't have to be mean to keep things inside. You don't have to be a liar and I drew emotions. You don't have to shout at me because I don't feel things for you. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Just chill. <laughs> you gotta keep those emotions in check. You're gonna be orphans forever. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't shouted like that since the day my mom went away. <laughs> this was not acceptable. I keep it in. And if I got in trouble, this was all Frank's fault. Maybe you should take a calming walk around the garden. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Very calm. Maybe you should look at your inciting incidents. <laughs> hey, Ripley. <laughs> I was gonna step in, but I don't know, it seemed like you didn't need my help, so. 
thank you. You know, I try to keep all the orphans in check the best way I can. Could have really used someone like you when I was an orphan, too. You were an orphan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine that somebody like you was orphaned. It was a lot like Barley. <laughs> Young and stupid and scared. <laughs> and then the mistress, the mistress showed me that I had to prove my worth, prove that I could keep my emotions in check. And I got moved to forestry, and the mistress took me as her own. I think you're going to get there too. <laughs> you really think so? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. You're gonna get there too. It's the only thing I've wanted for the past four years. <laughs> Enough of this! <laughs> I've completely lost my appetite. <laughs> away from people like that. I mean, like, you're really caring and all, but that guy's not going to make it. Don't say that. Frank has to make it. He had taken out of his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> She had learned. It's really heavy. <laughs> Listen, don't mind Frank. I I really do want him to turn out all right. He's the closest thing to a friend that I've got. Yeah? I thought maybe we could be friends. <laughs> if you need another friend, I'll I'll be in the forest. All right. <laughs> and if you need another friend. <laughs> Franklin. I've been waiting for you all morning. I apologize for being late. It's all right. I was waiting for you because I'm proud of you. <laughs> so very proud. For what? You have displayed an eye. An eye like none I've seen. You know just what to adjust in a person in order that they might become the prettiest flower in the garden. <laughs> My dear, you're moving up. This was all feeling very hypocritical to me. <laughs> because just at this moment, when I was achieving what I would hope for, to move up, to go to forestry, to, to get out of the orphans, <laughs> I was crumbling on the inside. The things that I was feeling for Tad all over 
<laughs> the frustration and fury that I was feeling at Frank tinged with something I couldn't describe. I couldn't help anybody because I couldn't help myself right now. You know, the higher you move up, the scarier it gets. They don't take a lot of orphans. And if I messed up, I... I didn't want Frank to be getting a delivery of roses on my behalf. Thank you. I will do everything I can to achieve. I know that you will. For an eye like yours, for just every little thing that needs to be adjusted, it doesn't come around often. <laughs> In fact, I may have been the last person with such an eye. Thirty years, likely, we've gone. And I'm sending you now to the Master Gardener. The Master Gardener? Surely. <laughs> yes, surely. <laughs> Go, my dear. Leave your buckets behind. <laughs> Thank you. She's waiting for you. Can I say goodbye to Frank? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> the relationships you make in such a silly garden as this mean nothing in the scheme of life. We're moving up to a much more beautiful world. for the first time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's what it's like for me. Come here, dear. I want to show you something. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm grafting. That's when you take one kind of plant and you attach it to another kind of plant and they make a better kind of plant. I didn't know that was possible. It's been done with roses for centuries. That's why there's so many varieties. Now the wild rose still grows in some places. I don't like the rose. <laughs> I should not have said that out loud. <laughs> no, no. That is your prerogative. However, I think you will change your mind eventually. <laughs> As I was saying, the wild rose still grows in places. And it was the progenitor of roses that we have now. But no one wants to walk down a garden path and get scratched by thorns. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we want to walk down the garden path, see the beautiful things, and only be touched when we choose to be touched. So they took the wild rose 
and they took a garden variety flower and they put them together again and again and then we had the tea rose and then finally we had the long stem variety <laughs> It's a beautiful metaphor, ma'am. <laughs> it's not even a metaphor. <laughs> I didn't think it was a metaphor either. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> now, you're a smart girl. I bet you didn't think that was a metaphor either. <laughs> Yes. I knew that you were talking exactly about the roses that you were creating. Yes. Oh. You know, Miss Franklin is, she's a highly prized teacher. She is the best I have been able to create so I love far. her. Yes. Some would say you grafted her, ma'am. <laughs> they would be correct. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, aren't you excited to find out? <laughs> Dunsley, take her to the chamber. Ma'am. Yeah. Mm. Uh. My pleasure. <laughs> it's a fine day for me when we graft and we don't weed. <laughs> Make sure that Miss Franklin is prepared. <sighs> Make sure she's scrubbed and ready for surgery. <laughs> Dunsley prepared Miss Franklin for surgery. <laughs> Not me, I I'm a fine specimen. I don't... This is a wonderful gift to be grafted. Uh, Miss Franklin, what? They're taking it. Don't take this part of my brain. <laughs> they're going to give it to you. What? <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> or he did. <laughs> oh, Dunsley. <laughs> you know, sometimes I don't weed. I just make them my guards. It's so fun. Uh, <laughs> I was having trouble processing my emotions just now. There was certainly quite a bit of fear that continued to be tamped down. There was also a very, very sick curiosity I hate to admit that to you, because what I should be feeling right now is simply a desperate desire to get away and run away and... 
But truly, I still wanted to know what she was talking about. <laughs> when you say grafted, are there others? <laughs> Miss Franklin. <laughs> Oh, yes, of course, no one knows this. <laughs> yes? <laughs> You've been grafted before, dear. What? Oh, yes. What are you saying? Well... Miss Franklin, what is she saying? Miss Franklin was very successful 30 years ago. We've had a lot of progress since then. So many orphans. Each of you, each of you in a tube, designed perfectly, the perfect little seed. But, but, but I had a mother to grow into a rose. But I had a mother. Did you, dear? Did you? <laughs> I would like to send my roses to Tad. Oh, Tad. Oh, he's a beautiful young man. If my good luck roses could please go to Tad. Of course, dear, of course. I finally understood what she was saying. She was requesting her roses to go somewhere. Good luck. Roses being delivered at my door. It was all coming together. I didn't quite have the perfect logical explanation, but it was all coming together. <laughs> my mother had been grafted. She sent her roses to me. That was it! My mother had been grafted. Yes, dear. I carry a little bit of her in here. Oh. Oh. Just, just the good parts. <laughs> Perhaps you'll acquire some, some of her during the procedure today. Oh, that's a lovely sentiment, Miss Frank. I'll miss you, I think. Oh. Maybe I will visit the compost. Oh, yes. Thank you, Dr. Reynolds. Thank you. You are in excellent hands, dear. Excellent hands. Mm, observation gallery. <laughs> Mistress Franklin, is there any way for us to get out of here? Well, I'm afraid. Part of me will be escaping with you, and the rest is going to the compost. Oh. I don't want you to go to the compost. It's the circle of life, dear. <laughs> Mistress Franklin, please. I'm going to whisper extremely quietly to you. Are you able to reach over and touch the person? Oh, never mind. <laughs> he just walked away. I can hear you. <laughs> Tiny buckets. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mrs. Franklin. Get out of here with us. Quick, she's watching oh, us right, right now! Right. <laughs> Where are you going? Guards! Guards! <laughs> I hadn't thought to plan out this far. <laughs> but if we keep on going... Yes. We can go to Tad's. Now this tunnel does let itself out in the forest. I've been this way before. You're you must know it from a previous memory. Oh, oh just... The girl will be around here somewhere. We have to go. Previous <laughs> times I've received craftings. Let's go. To Tad's. So we went to Tad's. <laughs> Oh, I'm so relieved you're well.
Well, <laughs> Tad, you all right? <laughs> no. We need a place to stay. Wait a minute. Weren't you supposed to be grafted? Yes. You know? You know about the grafting? Yeah, I do. He's the one who told me. You got there in time. I'm really proud of you, Frank. But you can't stay here. Well, no, no, Frank has We to have nowhere to go, man. I know. But it's too late. They're gonna come here. They knew I was sending my roses to Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta run. <laughs> You gotta take them. I, I'll stay no, them off. No, Frank, no, 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 no. I'll do it. Come on, man, Frank, you gotta. You gotta take them, man, because you're the man. And Listen up! <laughs> I am Mistress Franklin, and I am staying here to protect my garden one last time. Go. I have the axe. I'll be fine. <laughs> Frank, you can't go back. They'll kill you. Go, Tad. Go. <laughs> I am begging you. I am begging you. I am sending you every emotion that I feel. Ripley, we got to get out of here. No! Look over there. I got the sun. Frank! Frank! Oh, I couldn't reach him. Tad was so strong. Frank! <laughs>